Hello and welcome. My name is Sonia Gavan McKay, and today is flight day 12 of Axiom Space's fourth mission to the International Space Station. I am at the Axiom Space Station Development Facility in Houston, where teams are designing and developing our next generation space station. And we're live with two of our AX4 crew members who are aboard the International Space Station some 250 miles above Earth. Commander Whitson, you look fantastic today. Where where are you on the station? We're in the Columbus module, which is one module away from when we touched last time. And uh, we we were just getting ready to chat with you. Uh, swap. Are you yes. in? Yes, Peggy. Yes, I am. Just give me a moment. Okay. Oh. All right. I, I, I was wondering <laughs> whose legs those were, and now I see. Okay. Hello, Hello, Suave. Hi. How are you? Thanks to see you. Good to see you as well. How are you doing up there? Oh, great. It's it's really amazing. It's it's a truly amazing place, like the best research laboratory we could imagine and in orbit. And so you're maximizing your time on station then? Oh, yeah. I try to do my maximum. We are on time with all the mission objectives, so I'm very happy about that. So, it's so not like he's competitive. <laughs> exactly. That competitive <laughs> spirit really helps in this situation. I thought we would do something a little bit different because people are so interested in what it's like to live and work in space. I thought maybe we could share a meal together while we have our conversation. Oh, sure. Let's just get set up. I think we, we got re prepared. Well, while you so get set up, I'm we'll going to get <laughs> I'm going to get my stuff, too. And I. I heard we were going to eat the same thing. We are. I've been given the same packet of food that you have. Uh, I have it here. I wasn't able to prepare it in exactly the same way in space. But I also have a pierogi. So, how do you, Suavos, how do you, uh, how do you say um, enjoy your meal and tell us what we're eating? Oh, <laughs> excellent. And enjoy your meal in Polish. It's smacznego. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I will not, you know, make you repeat that. But <laughs> let me tell you about pierogi. Pierogi is a very, very, very Polish dish. So we eat them for Christmas. We eat them. It is also a comfort food. It is very, very homey. And wherever I lived, and I lived in so many different countries, in France, in Germany, in Switzerland, in England, in Norway, uh, I always made pierogi myself and made other people taste them just to share a bit of culture, a bit of Poland, and a bit of who we are. Why did you choose this? Is there a specific flavor choice that you made here? So um, what we could do, these are vegetarian pierogies, and these are exactly how we eat them for Christmas. So cabbage and mushroom is the stuffing inside with, uh, with, with the dough outside and boiled and cooked in the pots. Here, of course, we just reheated them with a little extra water. They're very good. I really enjoy it. Now, Commander, we spoke just a couple of days ago, and you were talking about how full the schedule is. Well, what's amazing is how much the guys have really gotten their space legs. They're really getting very efficient and working much more efficiently, and they're way less stressed. <laughs> so that's helpful. Uh, and they're getting a lot done. Uh, for instance, a uh, one of Shook's experiments is looking at is growing uh, microalgae, and they could be used in potentially uh, future space missions as a food supplement. Uh, it's got lots of nutrients and things in it. And speaking of food, uh, Tibor is also growing radishes, and he's doing a great job with the radishes and the miniature wheat. So. That sounds great. Now, Swavosh, before you left uh, on launch, we, we talked about what you were looking forward to accomplishing up in space. Tell us about some of the experiments that you've been doing. So ex experiments, uh, Polish part of the, uh, of Axiom 4 is very heavy in uh, research and technology. We are very loaded with, with different types of, uh, uh, of science from human physiology, psychology, to biotechnology, to physics and engineering. That's is where I feel the most comfortable with. But uh, um, just to mention a couple of experiments, we are working as well in collaboration with India and the European Space Agency on cyanobacteria. These created a big chunk of our atmosphere, our oxygen that we breathe today. We ha I have as well an experiment on microalgae or 
space volca uh, on volcanic algae that uh, uh, created the, the second two thirds of the, of the atmosphere that we we breathe. So this is the history of our planet, but also the future for us. I was working on uh, nanomaterials that can be future wearable sensors to gather our vitals on our everyday life. And I think the experiment I'm the most proud of as of today, but we still have a lot to do, is we demonstrated the first brain machine interface in space. So we gathered data from a human brain and then the machine interpreted this information directly from, from the brain and could execute certain actions, which is just fantastic. So what's it like doing that research in microgravity? Is it what you expected? <laughs> to a certain extent, yes, and to a certain extent, no. As, as Peggy said, we are adapting. We are getting better. We are moving much more efficiently and faster. We got to know the International Space Station, so this is a big learning for me. Uh, what I am used to is what you see around us. You know, Columbus, the European lab, or, or other places on the ISS were, you know, being surrounded by systems, by science. This is what I have been doing my whole life. So I think I had a good start. And now I am trying to do it in the new environment. And what about your theories? Have they evolved now that you've experienced it and you've, you've had time to really acclimate? I think every experiment brings new ideas. And this is what the research is about. You know, like pushing boundaries of science forward and having hundreds of people working on these experiments and uh, including me, who has this privilege to execute them in space, this, you know, allows us to move forward together and much faster and insert, explore certain directions that on our own we would never think about. On my side, whatever I do, I have, I have new ideas. And I, I can give an example of a bike that we did here on the station. It's called Cebus. It doesn't have a seat because we don't need it in space. But... I was really surprised how my body reacted to the first day on or the first days, my first bike session that I was not very performant and I was still adapting. And my second session, already one week with, into the mission, I got much better. Still not the same as on Earth, but I think this is, this is quite normal. But uh, just observing my body is, is, is a fascinating experiment. Now, changing gears a little bit, I know how you love documenting your experiences in moving images and still images. What is your photography like? What have you captured? Oh, I, I try to capture every moment. We have a lot of recordings, a lot of pictures. Obviously, no, not as many, as many as we would like to, but uh, there is this amazing place on the station called Cupola. It's our window back on home, our window on Earth. And I remember the first time I, I, I floated to Cupola, I opened my eyes, I was... You know, the, the view is just fantastic. It's, it's so difficult to describe, describe. So whenever I can, and I don't have so much of this time, but I try to float to Cupola to look back on all of you, on, on Poland, on home, and on everyone living on, on this beautiful planet Earth. Well, I look forward we to seeing your photos. Yeah. What's that, Peggy? Oh, we've got actually... Oh, yeah. He's got a picture here I wanted to show you, but I want you to know he's got a reputation for being a, a uh, the selfie man. He's always got to have selfies of everything, but that's because he's got a built-in selfie stick. He's got yeah. very long arms. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, oh, that's a great shot. Oh, that's fantastic. I mean, it is a selfie, stuff. but you get the full effect of taking the pictures of us down here on Earth but and yeah. the equipment that you're using. Uh, Exactly. So who took this the picture of you? So uh, that was Tak, who's the commander of the ISS at this moment. And I asked him to, to grab a couple of pictures to, because I very much cherish this, these moments in Cupola. And for me, there are so many surprising things, but how the earth, how beautifully it looks from Cupola is, is difficult to describe. Well, it is beautiful. And I love seeing the smile on your face. Captured forever. I love it. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Well, Peggy, uh, I know that there's a lot of work that's coming up in the next couple of days. What are you looking forward to? Well, we're continuing, and actually even this afternoon, I'm continuing on the cancer in low Earth orbit study, where we're look at growing cancer cells and uh, treat treating them with two different types of drugs and to see if they will be more effective at affecting and stopping the replication of the cancer cells. 
And we'd had previously on Axiom 2 and 3 some very interesting results. And so this time it's actual breast tissue from a subject on the ground that we're testing the drugs against. And so I'm very excited about the re- those research results. Well, thank you to my two favorite scientists joining for me for a meal. I don't think I ever thought I'd be having space pierogies live with two astronauts. So thank you so much for spending a little time with us. And always great to see you. I look forward to our next chat, Peggy. Absolutely. <laughs> thank Good. you, Sonia. It was great having you here on board. Thank you so much. I look forward to having pierogies with you again soon. <laughs> Well, I know that there are many people in Poland, India, and Hungary who are incredibly proud of what you're doing. And with that, we'll let the entire...